TED is 30. The World Wide Web is celebrating this month its 25th anniversary. So I've got a question for you. Let's talk about the uh, the, the journey, mainly about, about the future. Let's talk about the state. Let's talk about what sort of a web we want. So 25 years ago, then I was working at CERN. I got permission in the end, uh, after about a year, to basically do it as a side project. I uh, wrote the code. Uh, I was at first, I suppose, the first user. There was a lot of uh, con uh, concern that uh, people didn't want to pick it up because it would be too complicated. A lot of persuasion, a lot of wonderful collaboration with other people. And bit by bit, it worked. It took off. It was pretty cool. And in fact, a few years later, in 2000, 5% of the world population were using the World Wide Web. 2007, seven years later, 17%. In 2008, we formed the World Wide Web Foundation, partly to look at that and wor worry about that figure. And now here we are, 2014, and 40% of the world are using the World Wide Web. Obviously, it's in, uh, and counting. Obviously, it's increasing. I want you to think about both sides of that. OK, obviously, to anybody here at TED, uh, the first question you ask is, what can we do to get the, first, the other 60% on board as quickly as possible. Lots of important things. Obviously, it's going to be around mobile. But also, I want you to think about the 40%. Because if you're sitting there yourself, sort of uh, with a web in Labor Live, you don't remember things anymore, you just look them up, uh, then uh, you may feel that uh, it's been a success and you can, we can all sit back. But in fact, yeah, it's been a success. It, there's lots of things. There's Khan Academy, for crying out loud. There's Wikipedia. Uh, there's a huge number of free e-books that you can read online. Lots of wonderful things for education. Things in many areas. Online commerce has, in some cases, completely turned upside down the way commerce works all together, made types of commerce available which weren't available at all before. Uh, on a commerce has been sort of almost universally affected. Uh, government, not universally affected, but very affected in a, in a good day. Lots of open data, uh, lots of e-government. So lots of things which, you, which, which are visible happening on the web. Also lots of things which are less visible. Uh, the healthcare, late at night, when they're worried about what sort of cancer somebody they care about might have. When they just talk over, uh, uh, across the internet, to somebody uh, who's, who they care about very much in another country. Uh, those sorts of things are, uh, are not even, they're not out there, and in fact, they require a certain amount of privacy. So we kind of assume that part of the web, part of the deal with the web, is when I use the web, you know, it's, it's, it's just a transparent, neutral medium, and I can talk to you over it without worrying about what we, in fact, now know is happening without worrying about the fact that not only will surveillance be happening, but it'll be done by people who may abuse the data. So in fact, suddenly we realize we can't just use the web, we have to worry about what the underlying infrastructure of the whole thing. Is it, in fact, of a quality that, well, that we need? We revel in the fact that it's got a wonderful, uh, we have this wonderful free speech that we can talk to, any, we can tweet, and all, lots and lots of people can see our tweets, except when they can't. Uh, except when actually uh, Twitter is blocked from their country, or some, uh, in some way the way we have tried to express ourselves has put some information about the state of ourselves, the state of the country we live in, which isn't available to anybody else. So we must protest and make sure that censorship is cut down, and so the web is opened up where there is censorship. We love the fact that the web is open. It allows us to talk, anybody can talk to anybody, it doesn't matter who we are. And then we join these big social networking uh, companies, which are, which are in fact sort of effectively built as silos, so that it's much easier to talk to somebody in the same social network than it is to build a, talk, talk to somebody in a different one. So in fact, we're sort of sometimes limiting ourselves. And we also have this, the, if you've read the book about the filter bubble, the filter bubble phenomenon is that we love to use machines which help us find stuff we like. So we love it when they learn what things we like to click on, and so the machine automatically feeds us the stuff that we like, and we end up with this rose-colored spectacles view of the world uh, called a filter bubble. So here are some of the things which maybe threaten the sort of web we have. What sort of web do you want? I want one which is not fragmented into lots of pieces, as some countries have been uh, suggesting they should do in reaction to the recent surveillance. Uh, I want a web which has got 
um, for example, is a really good basis for democracy. I want a web where uh, I can use healthcare with privacy and where there's a lot of health data, clinical data is available to scientists to do research. I want a web where the other 60% get on board as fast as possible. I want uh, a web which is such a powerful basis for innovation that when something nasty happens, some disaster strikes, then we can respond by building stuff to, uh, to respond to it very quickly. So those are just some of the things that I want. I mean, from a, a big list, obviously it's longer. You have your list. I want us to use this 25th anniversary to think about what sort of a web we want. You can go to web at 25.org and find some links. There are lots of sites where people have started to put together a Magna Carta, a Bill of Rights for the web. How about we do that? How about we decide these are, in a way, becoming fundamental rights, the right to communicate with whom I want. What will be on your list for that Magna Carta? Let's crowdsource a Magna Carta for the web. Let's do that this year. Let's use the energy from the 25th anniversary to crowdsource a Magna Carta for the web. Thank you. And uh, sort of uh, do me a favor. Will you uh, fight for it for me? Okay, thanks.